Autumn is almost here and I've been really feeling a pull lately to cozy up my home, add a bit more decoration and I've also been spending a lot more time in the kitchen cooking food from scratch. I think it's only natural for us to feel an urge to make our homes more comfortable and inviting at this time of year. Summer is slowly waning and we're entering the darker half of the year. Longer nights mean spending more time indoors and I want to make sure that my home is as welcoming and cozy as possible. I did buy a few new decorative items such as a wooden tray for my dining table, a small house plant and a few glass storage containers for my kitchen. But other than that, I try either shopping secondhand or making things myself. I want to live more intentionally and part of that means becoming more mindful of the things I buy. I definitely have a tendency to hit the add to cart button a little too fast. Every product always promises to improve our lives in one way or another, but how often do we actually get a long-lasting fulfillment from the things we buy? More often than not, the instant gratification we get from shopping is only short-lived, and all the stuff we bought with good intentions ends up cluttering our homes and minds. I have so many crafting tools and supplies that I acquired over the years for various creative projects that I never started. Instead of bringing in lots of new stuff, I want to make the most out of what I already have at home. Here you see me making a painting for my kitchen. Now, a picture of lemons might not be your typical autumn imagery. But I wanted to go for a more timeless Mediterranean vibe for my kitchen and I thought the lemons would add a happy, fresh touch that goes well with the minty tone of my kitchen backsplash. There are so many simple and inexpensive ways to celebrate autumn. What better way to welcome the season than with a bit of cozy baking? I'm gonna show you now how to make cute and delicious pumpkin shaped muesli buns. You'll first need to warm up 150 grams of plain yogurt and 150 milliliters of water in a pan. Pay attention not to overheat the mixture, it should be lukewarm at most. Add 400 grams of flour, a sachet of instant dry yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of sugar to a bowl and mix well. This was the first time I tried this recipe. Next time I'm making these buns, I will add a little more sugar, maybe two teaspoons instead of one, because I prefer my muesli buns to be a bit sweeter. Then, add the yogurt water mixture to the flour and start kneading the dough. Of course you could use a KitchenAid, but I don't have one. Knead for at least 10 minutes, you want a very smooth and stretchy dough. Next I added the muesli. I just sprinkled a little bit of muesli on my kitchen counter and kneaded it into the dough. I'm not really sure how much I used, maybe 100 grams, but I think I could have added even more. After I added the muesli, I split the dough into half. I read somewhere that it's better to freeze yeast dough before letting it rise and then letting it rise after thawing. I have no idea how true that is, but it's what I did. The other half of dough I put back into the bowl and covered with a damp kitchen towel and an old shower cap 
to prevent the dough from drying out and then I let it dry for an hour. Now comes the fun part. I divided the dough into smaller parts. I think perhaps it would have been better to make a little bit bigger buns, but I wasn't sure how much they would rise in the oven and how big they would get. I turned them in my hands to form little round dumplings. Then I cut about an arm's length of kitchen twine. I placed the dough in the middle of the twine and started wrapping the twine around the dough like so. I made a knot at the top, placed the dumplings on a baking sheet and covered with a damp kitchen towel. I ended up making 5 little buns. I let them rest for another 20 minutes, but maybe I should have let them rise for even a little bit longer. It wasn't as warm in my kitchen that day as I thought. In the meantime, I heated up the oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe it would have been nice to give the buns an egg wash, but I didn't have any eggs that day, so I just added some water to the top of each bun. Then I baked them for 25 minutes. While there are some things I would do differently next time, overall I think they turned out really well. Autumn is a time of transition, a time of change. I can smell it, like a fragrance in the air, carried by the wind that always picks up speed at this time of year. The transitory seasons of spring and autumn are always good opportunities to let go of what doesn't serve us anymore. I'm making an extra effort now to use up any food, toiletry products or crafting supplies that have been taking up space in my drawers and on my shelves. I'm slowly getting rid of any excess, making more room in my home for the things that are actually useful and valuable to me. I don't want to rush this process of decluttering. After all, most of the things I own I got for a specific reason. The hair mask that I thought would give my hair more volume. The natural fiber yarn I wanted to make plant hangers from. Or the rice flour I wanted to make pizza dough with. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. I just never got around to actually using them because I got distracted too quickly by other new things to explore. Perhaps the unread books on my bookshelf could actually change my life, if I only read them. I want to give all the items I bought a chance to fulfill their purpose. I also want to teach myself a lesson, that anything I bring into my home will ultimately take up not just physical space, but also time and mental energy. It's what the minimalists Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus refer to as the true cost of things. I hope that by truly experiencing the full cost of owning a thing, I will be more mindful in the future of what I bring into my home. Walk into any store at this time of year and you're almost knocked over by the sheer amount of fall decor and fashion that stores practically shove in our faces. It's hard not to feel like we need all these things to fully celebrate the season. However, I believe that seasonal living goes beyond decorating our homes and updating our wardrobe. It's about embracing the changes that come with each season and aligning our lives with nature's rhythm. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is always easy. In our busy day-to-day -day lives, we often find ourselves being pulled in completely different directions. Expectations from the outside world might be contrary to the natural pace we like to move at. While the last months of the year are naturally a time for slowing down and turning our attention inwards, for many of us they are actually the busiest time of the year. But even if it requires a bit of effort, it's all the more worth to push back against the rush and intentionally carve out space for rest and restoration. Spend time away from your electronic devices, enjoy comforting meals with loved ones, reflect on the past months and set your intentions for the year ahead. 
You don't need to buy anything to enjoy the changing of the seasons. You only have to be present to experience it. Go out for a walk and observe the changes in nature. Collect colorful leaves and weave them into a garland. If you have a backyard, make a bonfire and invite your friends and family for food and drinks. Prioritize rest and restorative activities you enjoy, be it reading, knitting, painting or taking a luxurious nap. Cultivate small, daily rituals that help you slow down and return to the present moment. Let's find joy in the simple pleasures autumn has to offer.